Hey guys, it's Pokemonster TCG here, back with another Japanese Pokemon investment video. Now, for today's video, we will be going back to one of the most heralded generations of the past few generations of Pokemon cards, which is the Sword and Shield era. So on my screen, you can see that I've got all 30 sets of Sword and Shield on Pokelector. And what we're gonna do in today's video is we're gonna extract out which sets I think are the most undervalued at the moment. So let's get straight into it. So it goes without saying that everything I'm presenting here is going to be my own opinion and you're welcome to form your own opinion and make your own decisions. I am going to be presenting the top three most undervalued sets in my opinion, but I'm going to be doing that by reference to a few criteria. The first one is going to be some basic information around the set and its release. The second one is going to be based around the theme of the set. Do I think it has an identity? The third is going to be on the current value of the set. So basically just eBay last sold or the cheapest buy it now. Next, I'm going to be looking at something that I think is probably the most important, which is the set strength. So we'll be going through the set lists and identifying the chase cards. And finally, we will be looking at the print runs for each set because without a doubt, the demand and the amount of supply that is available of a set is going to influence its current and future price. So in third place for most undervalued set, I'm going to go with Jet Black Poltergeist. As you can see, this set is themed around the Shadow Rider Calyrex, which was a DLC legendary Pokemon and is one third of the English version of Chilling Rain. Now the Jet Black in the name and Poltergeist, I think is a reference to the Spectre that Calyrex is riding. If you don't know, Calyrex has two variants. One is the Ice Rider and the other one is the Shadow Rider. So this set is based around the Shadow Rider Calyrex and was released in April 2021 which is coming up to close to three years now, so it's not a new set anymore. So next we are going to be looking at the values of the set and what better way to do that than eBay last sorts. So we have two eBay last sorts in the last month, basically around 92 to 99 pounds, which is around 120 bucks, I would say. Now we're gonna supplement that by looking at the cheapest buy it nows, which are obviously higher, but I guess the key is that these haven't sold. And just to round off the value point, we're just going to try to see if people, you know, sometimes people don't type the full set name when they're looking at last sold. So let's see if we type S6K, are there going to be more last solds that show up? And there we go. We've got one on the 19th of February that sold for £101. So you average out all three of the sales, it's pretty much around £100. I'm comparing this set really to Fusion Arts because I said I'd be comparing some of the last sorts to other sets in the same era. And if we look at Fusion Arts Japanese booster boxes, they're about 30% higher at £129, £120, 104 129 So I think that £120 range is correct for Fusion Arts. So we are looking at the set list for Jet Black Poltergeist now and the first thing to say off the bat is it's got a Celebi in it. So it's got multiple variants of Celebi. You have a Celebi V, Celebi V Max, you've got a Full Art Celebi which I'll show later and a Rainbow Celebi. On top of that you have the beautiful beautiful Alt Art Celebi which didn't form part of this set but was linked to the release of this set. So it was a Pokemon Center booster box purchase bonus which is stamped with the jet black set logo so although we can't count it as part of this set i do think it adds the overall theme and strength of the set and the memory that people have of this set moving on we should be looking at the hollows i think don't underestimate the hollows it has a gengar in the set gengar is an extremely popular pokemon and gengar hollows generally do very well even if they're easy to pull. This Gengar artwork I think is a pretty good Gengar artwork. It's got its tongue rolling up the stairs. In PSA 10, I'm sure it could be 30 to 40 bucks. So I think that also adds to the set strength. Next, we're gonna be looking at the Celebi V because I mentioned it earlier. I think this for full art is pretty nice. But then we're gonna move on to the big hits that I think really bring up this set in terms of strength. First, we have the Zero Aura V Alt Art, which is one of my favorite Sword and Shield V Alt Arts. Drawn by Atsushi Furusawa, who did the Sleepy Dragonite. Here you have Zero Aura trying to reach the sun in the distance in the Crown Tundra 
surrounded by other Pokemon. I think just the drawing of Zeraora, it's almost human-like, the way its eyes are and the way it's like grasping towards the sun. So playing into the theme, 10 out of 10. Illustration, 10 out of 10. We also have a very nice Shadow Rider Calyrex. Not as good as the Zero Aura, but I still think really good in terms of matching the theme of the set. Then we have a slightly weaker alt art. We have the Bliss EV, which is not worth that much, but I still think it's quite nice. And as a bonus, we have a Waifu Caitlyn. So this card is probably one of the top waifus in a Sword and Shield era. If we just look at the last swords, you can see here, it's probably around 200 bucks, I would say, which is still pretty good going for a set or for the current market circumstances. But to top off everything in terms of set strength, we have the legendary Shadow Rider Calyrex VMAX. This is one of my favorite alt arts, V or VMAX from the Sword and Shield era. I think just the color scheme, the fact that it's drawn by Mitsuhiro Arita, who is one of the god level illustrators in the hobby. And just the way the Shadow Calyrex Rider looks there with the guy, I think, peeping out of the window. If you add the glitter on top of this, it's an absolutely amazing card. So it's set strength for this, I think, is extremely underrated in the context of it being a 100 pound set. Now the final bit that we need to look at is the print run for this set. Now from memory, I know that this set had a reprint towards the end of the Sword and Shield era because that's when it allows me to pick up more of this set. The PSA population report is not determinative in itself, but if we look at the Cali Rex Rider VMAX, the population is 1,671. Just for reference, the Moonbrion is like 5,000 for that. And the Moonbrion is one of four VMAX alt arts from EV Heroes. This is the only one. So when you compare the print run of this set to EV Heroes, it's much, much smaller. Now that's not to say that it wasn't printed a lot because it is still modern Pokemon. You have the full art Caitlyn, which is pop 8,000. But still overall, when we take account of all the factors that I've said, I think this set is very, very undervalued. So number two in my list of most undervalued Sword and Shield sets, it is going to be Paradigm Trigger. Now this is basically known as the Lugia set or the Japanese half of Silver Tempest. It was released in October 2022, so it's probably close to a year and a half old. As you can see from the set theme, it's based around Lugia, Regidrago, Regieleki, and just these three Pokemon and some other Pokemon converging in mysterious ruins. And that's really what this set is all about and what I love so much about this set. So if we look at the type of products that were released with this set, we have the first ever mystery box produced by Pokemon, where it gives you seven packs of Paradigm Trigger and a mystery set of deck boxes and sleeves plus promo card. So this is where you get that alt art V Lugia card, as well as some very, very nice sleeves. I think overall with the set theme is just so cool, so awesome. Now, if we look at the current values of the set, I would say it's extremely cheap. You look at this last sold on my screen right now, 68 pounds, so about 75, 80 bucks. Just gonna go to a random UK supplier, Japan to UK, you can see they still have Paradigm Trigger in stock for 75 pounds or 85 bucks. As you can see, Paradigm Trigger plus one promo pack, which is another thing that they brought out with this set release, those blue looking promo packs. Again, it's still available at £75. So in terms of the current value, I would say it's really, really cheap compared to some of the top tier Sword and Shield sets. You look at Lost Abyss, it's £135. Fusion Arts, it's £130. Then we don't even need to talk about, you know, Blue Sky Stream and EV Heroes, which are like £300 to £350. And actually, this is a good chance for me to say if you're interested in the values of Japanese booster boxes for Sword and Shield, you can check out my video where I did a list of the top 10 most expensive booster boxes. Moving on to the set list, we're going to be using Pokelector again. One of the things that does hold this set back in terms of the set list, I think, is the spread of the secret rares. So you've got Chesnaut V. Omastar is not a secret rare. Something that is good for it though is Pikachu and Pikachu is always good. So just like the Gengar Hollow that I was talking about, these Pikachu cards may seem like bulk cards at the moment, but I make sure to always sleeve them and put them in my binders in case someone wants to buy a PSA 10 in the future. So that's a positive. 
Then you have the Unknown V and the Unknown V Star, which I think are both very, very cool. Unknown is obviously playing a big part in this whole theme about it being set based on mysterious ancient ruins where you find these sort of ancient Pokemon. But if we look at the V cards in general, you know, Hisuian, Arcanine, Skuntank V, they're admittedly not the most popular Pokemon. Obviously then we do have Lugia, which I'm just smiling look at the, looking at this because this artwork is just amazing. Again, drawn by Mitsuhiro Arita, so you can see there's a pattern developing here, which is whenever there's something by Arita, I think the set is good. But just honestly, that has to be one of the best V artworks. Obviously, you then have the Lugia V Star, which I think is always going to be a little bit popular. Looks like I made a mistake when I was talking about Omastar a moment ago, but the spread of the SRs I would say is not great. So you've got the Chesnaught, Omastar, Regielaki, Hisuian Arcanine. And to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the Lugia V. I don't think it's drawn very well, but I think it still is popular with Lugia collectors. Then we're obviously going to be looking at the alt arts. I think this one is one of the most amazing alt arts from the Sword and Shield era. Just because, as a fun fact, it says victory. It's spelt out with unknowns. And I just think that is so, so cool for this card. It's never going to be like a top tier card, but playing into the theme of the set, again, I think is really good. Then we have a Skontank V, which I think is probably one of the least popular, <laughs> just because the Pokemon itself is not popular. And also, I don't think this artwork really plays into the theme. So this one, I don't think it adds that much, but it is still an alt art. Then we have the Reggie Drago V, which I think is extremely underrated. Again, Reggie Drago is positioned somewhere in the ruins where this world has been created by Paradigm Trigger. And you've also got the Lugia flying around in the background. Now my friend Max doesn't like this one, but I don't know why, because I just love the way that Reggie Drago is sitting. It's like a chonky boy just contemplating life, you know? Moving on to the waifus or trainers, we've got the Candice, which was drawn by Naoki Saito. Now most of the trainers drawn by this illustrator have a premium that comes along with them. I'm not a waifu collector myself, but I can see the value in that. Then you've got a lower tier waifu, which is still a waifu, but cheaper. But overall, in the context of the set, I think it does help the set. So you've got the Worker SR. I'm just going to touch on Lance a bit as well. Now, this is not going to be a high value, popular trainer card, but the trainer itself is really popular. And I think that the general illustration is very, very cool. And finally, you have one of my favorite cards from the whole Sword and Shield era. It's the Lugia V drawn by Kawaiyu. So let me see if I can just zoom in on that that artwork is honestly awesome and when paradigm trigger first came out there was so much hype over this card i think on card rush it was going for like a hundred thousand yen or 600 pounds it has calmed down massively now so the psa 10 for this luya is 300 pounds i would say you can get it at so 350 to 380 bucks you can get this card for me that's extremely undervalued but before we finish off on our assessment of the value, we obviously have to look at the population for this set. And if we go down to look at the population for the main cards of this set, you can see that Lugia's pops 7,000. So that's a very, very high number when you compare it to the Calyrex VMAX, which was 1,600. It is to be expected because it's an SR rarity Lugia. So actually it compares, it's quite comparable to the Caitlyn in Jet Black Poltergeist. From that suggestion, I would say that print runs were similar, but from my own personal memory, I think this set was overprinted towards the end of the Sword and Shield era. You look at the Candice, it's population 10,000. So definitely not a rare set yet, but I think what it's got going for it is it's only been out since October, 2022. Compare that to Jet Black, which was April, 2021. So this set has plenty of more time for the supply to be absorbed up and for people to actually value it. Because when I look at the theme of the set and the fact that it's based around Lugia, the actual quality of the Lugia alt art itself, I think this set is really, really underrated at the moment. If you've stuck to this part of the video, thanks very much for the support guys. And please consider subscribing to my channel if you want more Pokemon based and One Piece based content. Now to finish off the list, I think this was sort of a tie with Paradigm Trigger. It's going to be Starbirth. This is the Arceus set. 
So the set released in January of 2022, which coincided with the release of Pokemon Legends Arceus. So in terms of the timings, I think they got it really right. In terms of the box art, it's obviously got Arceus on the front. And I think the set name really works well, Star Birth. So it's, it's all about the introduction of V-Star cards, which started with the set. So obviously that works really well with the set name. But it was also the first set in 2022, which kickstarted a chain of Gen 4 based sets. Now I'm just cherry picking here, but we also have Time Gazer, Space Juggler and Lost Abyss, which are based around Dialga, Palkia and Giratina. What we're going to do next is we're going to be looking at the price of this set because that obviously is going to impact what we think about the value. So on my screen, we can see some buy it nows available for £74, £75, £80. When we look at the sold listings, we are going to see around that same zone, £70, £65. So this has actually gone down in price. In US dollars, I would say 75 to 80 bucks is probably what it is. So to me, that is a really cheap set to buy at the moment. And I'll explain why by reference to the set strength, obviously. So if we look at the set, it's all based around Gen 4 in the main. You've got the Turtwig here, Turtwig, then you have the Grodel and the Torterra line. So that's one line. And then we'll go back to the main set. Before I get onto the Zards, I'm also going to mention, I believe this was the first time that Shinji Kanda did an artwork very very popular artist now but this was his first introduction to the pokemon tcg so again it's not something that's going to prop up the value that much but in terms of the significance of the set i do think it's really cool that his first artwork was this crazy magmar that he put into this set so again really good and then you can see there's some really really cool like interchangeable artworks so you've got the electivire and magmortar here drawn by egawa again a very popular artist then on the flip side, you've got the other perspective, which is you've got the Electivire and the Magmortar together. Again, all Gen 4 based evolutions. And then to finish off my points on the commons mainly, you've got the Chimchar to Infernape line, Piplup to Imperleon line. So really this set is a love letter to Gen 4 in my opinion, because you've got the three starting Evo lines really. Then we're looking at the V cards. You've got Shaman V and Shaman V star. Again, Gen 4 Pokemon really really popular really hard to get in the game at the time but obviously the key point that i'm going to make about this set is it's got a charizard theme to it as well so you've got the charizard v and you've got the charizard v star so again this was the first time that they introduced v star cards into pokemon sword and shield if we move on to the rest of the set you can see it's got a raichu v which is always going to help not as popular as pikachu but still a popular pokemon again Another bit that confirms that it's a love letter to Gen 4, you've got the Gibble to Garchomp line. And then obviously you've also got the main mascot of the set, which is the RCS V and the RCS V star. If we move on to the SRs, I think these are really not too shabby. So you've got a very nice Shaman here. So I wouldn't be too disappointed if I pulled this in a box. Obviously you've got the Charizard V and that's what's so great about these sets. When they have one Charizard, they're gonna milk it out into all different rarity types. Then you've got the Raichu V SR. Again, as I said before, it's a popular Pokemon. And even the Arceus. So I think the CGI SR spread for this set is actually really good. There's still some that you wouldn't wanna pull, but there's quite a few popular Pokemon sprinkled into there, if you get me. If we look at the trainers, you've got Cynthia's Aspiration, which I think would be the most valuable trainer in this set. I don't think the illustration is top notch, but obviously as it's Cynthia, she's the champion of Sinnoh. It's always gonna be worth a little bit. And then we have Sharon's Care, which again, I think is just such a nice illustration for a trainer card. And just before I move on to the alt arts, cause that's the main draw, we even have the strength backed up in the later rarities. So you've got the Shaman V-Star, rainbow which i think is really good but the charizard rainbow v star again is going to be an extremely collectible card rainbows were not that popular in sword and shield but because you've put charizard on it i think that makes it really really good then you've also got an rcs v star so as you can see the theme is totally based around gen 4 but it's got a central focus on rcs and charizard which are 
two of the most popular Pokemon in the franchise. You've got Arceus in V, V-Star, Rainbow V-Star, Gold V-Star. You've got Arceus in SR, and then we're gonna move on to the alt arts because that's where it really bangs. We start off with a Lumineon V, which I think is extremely underrated. I really like the color contrast of when it's underwater. So I think this artwork is really, really good. Then we're looking at the Honchkrow V. Pokemon have done a few illustrations like that, which is based around birds bunched together. But again, this was probably one of the earlier instances of when they did that. Again, I think it looks really good. Then we're going to be going on to one of my favorite alt arts again in the Sword and Shield era, which is the Arceus V alt drawn by Tawayu, one of my favorite artists again. Just the whole godliness around this illustration is just so underrated. You can see the rays of light coming out from its body. I think this is one of the stronger alt arts in the Sword and Shield era. But just to finish it off as well, as if that wasn't enough, we have the Charizard V alt art. This is a continuation of the gamebook Charizard promo where it was sort of fighting with the Venusaur. In this case, it's like the second part of the fight drawn by Ryota Murayama, who again, I think is a popular artist. So when I'm looking at the set strength, this one is really insane because in terms of the hollows and the Shinji Kondo artwork, you've got that covered. Then you've got really popular Pokemon all the way through the set, which filters into the SR cards. So Shaman, Charizard, Raichu, Arceus. Trainers, not the best, but still some nice ones. You've got Cynthia and Sharon. Not necessarily worth that much, but nice to add to the set. And then even in the rainbow and gold rarities, this set does really well compared to other sets because it has a Charizard V-Star, Shaman V-Star, Arceus V-Star, even has a gold Arceus V-Star. And then you top it off with the four alt arts all of which I think are pretty strong, so there's no weakness in there. Honchkrow is obviously the worst one, but even the Lumineon I think is really good. So set strength, again, is really, really good for Starbirth. So then we just need to finalize it by looking at the print runs. Now, I don't recall that many reprints of this set, at least not past 2022, so nothing in 2023. Looking at the full art, Cynthia's got 6,000, but I think where we'll get the best grasp of the print run is looking at the most popular cards, which is going to be the Arceus, 3,187, but mainly we are looking at the Charizard. So, okay, the Charizard was printed or graded in a PSA slab 8,128 times. So, when I'm looking at the population comparison across the three sets I've listed, they're actually all sort of similar. In terms of population and maybe that's why they're lagging behind their counterparts a bit but when i look at the contents of the set i have no doubt that starbirth is a better set than 65 pounds same with paradigm trigger and i have no doubt that jet black poltergeist is better than 100 pounds so those were my top picks for the most undervalued sets obviously people might have different views people might say v star universe I didn't really want to touch on high class sets because I've done a video on those already. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this content. If you did, please make sure to like, subscribe and comment as usual. And I'll see you guys next time.